Jen from Scrap and Posh and I am here with Artistic Studio Creation Design Team project and this is our book nook. Um, in the previous video we did the box. We didn't put it together but we cut the box and the cobblestone street and this one's going to be diagonally. Now you can take these techniques and make whatever you want. So this is Ollivander's wand shop and this is a cut file that I designed in the Cameo software and I will link a Google Doc in the description if it lets me if not I'll link it on my blog which uh, you can go into my profile and find my blog it's scrappingposh.blogspot.com and there's a free download button on that and there's some different files for you but even with the cut files this is finicky so that's why I say that this is an expert project because I don't have tabs it's 120 pounds of cardstock the tabs um, are too hard to fold the building is the exception. There are tabs on the building to make it a half inch thick. So these are only half inch thick buildings. And I call these templates because I'm not actually going to use this for the building. I could, but it doesn't have enough texture for me. So I'm going to go ahead and use the foam like we did on the cobblestone street. If you absolutely 100% want to make these buildings after all the tutorials are done, I will put the templates up on my Etsy shop. Uh, and I can cut them out uh, with 110 pound cardstock. Um, it's going to be expensive because they take a really, really long time to cut, and they also take a long time to punch out and organize and all that stuff. So, you will have the option to purchase these templates as you see them. Maybe not all nice and neat like this, but um, yeah, it's going to be an option if you'd like, uh, as of this time. I don't know how much I would charge for them. I think it took me two hours to cut and it took me a good 15 minutes just to weed this one out and I still got three to go. So anyways, this is a template. Of course you can make any house that you want. You can also make the windows different. You can make the window panes uh, bigger so it's easier to cut out. Uh, you can use your X-Acto knife. If you guys are members of the Facebook group, you see how badly I am at exactoing, so uh, you know why I use my cameo for these things. But having said that, let's get going. Again, if you want the paper or the PDF templates for these, when you print them out, make sure they're the right size. Let me give you a size on this. From uh, top to bottom, and that's with the half inch on the top. Ollivander's measures eight and five eighths, eight and a half would work. If we fold down that top, the building front itself measures seven and seven eighths. And I think I didn't do this on the last one, but I may put some supports in there. So just scraps left over from what I already cut, and since these are half inch, right, am I saying that right? Yep, these are half inch, they stick a half inch out from the wall. Okay, so let's start with this, because we're not actually going to use this piece of paper, at least I'm not. And this is the only one that I used the foam board for, so I'm going to put these aside and try not to get them all over the place. And get my little cutting mat here and a piece of foam board. 
Remember, peel the paper from both sides. And this is dollar store foam board, so cheap stuff, but I like it because the paper peels off nice. I got the Elmer's half inch foam board and I still haven't been able to get the paper off of it, so I got something else, but I mean, it's great quality if you don't want the paper to come off. So, and the reason why we're using foam board for this, I'm going to cut the top and bottom off, or the top and the side flaps off. The reason why I'm using foam board for this is because I drew a texture on, but because we're putting lights in, all the texture uh, makes it a lot more interesting. Again, I'm using 120 pound cardstock, which isn't super important for this building, but it will be for the other ones. Because the other ones, we use those templates to make the buildings. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do. And this is my, yeah, this is my factory edge. So I'm going to use my two factory edges to cut the profile. You guys can see that white on white. The nice thing about this project and um, the entire reason why you don't have to buy these templates even if you want it to look nice is that it's kind of hidden like it's in that box so you can have a lot of hidden detail or you cannot put a lot of detail in it as long as you have some texture it's going to look good so keep that in mind you don't need it to be so detailed if you don't want it to be. You can look them up on Pinterest and there are some that are really, really plain, but still look wonderful. Now I'm just going along the inside of these uh, windows and the door frame. And it doesn't have to be exact because for the most part we're going to cover that back up, but do try to keep your blades straight because uh, we are going to have to glue directly to the foam and it's not the easiest thing to do. Make sure you have a sharp blade. If you don't, your foam will pull. And when I first did this, I did have to make some adjustments to the files in order for them to be correct this time around. And with the template, since we're using 110 pound cardstock, you get a little more forgiveness than you would. If you were just using like a copy weight paper, a 65 pound cardstock, you would be cutting into your template a lot more. Okay, 
So, let's see if the damage I've done. I'll take out all the little components. If you want to save these for later, you can. Um, can't think of anything off the top of my head that I need them for. Maybe one of the windows for the top. The big windows. If you find one that you didn't cut all the way through, just take your X-Acto knife and go down the length. Much easier once you got a line there already. It's usually in the corners that you don't get it all the way. good representation. I kept one of the large windows so that we can use it for the top. And so when we make the buildings we want the half inch to stick out on the side and not behind the building because you're going to see the side of the building more than the front face. So this is the actual size you need for the front. So I'm just going to take that side panel that we cut off and again use it as a template. Go straight down my foam. is going to be the same as the first. There we go. And then for the top, you're not really going to see the top. these little flaps off because we don't need them for this application. So it doesn't really matter if you do top, bottom, whatever. So I'm just going to take my little window that I kept and cut the top out of that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to keep this for now may have to hack it up and use it for something else. We don't know. And we'll just get rid of the rest of these. Okay, now we're going to take the building and do the same technique that we did with the cobblestone. I got my little tiny pencil here. Not too sharp, not too dull. And this one, I would, sorry, I would go ahead and make the texture just a bit different from the street. Uh, you can make it like bricks. Uh, mine is going to be stone. So it's going to be similar, but I'm going to try and keep it mostly square because my assumption is that it's easier to build buildings with square blocks. And you don't want all the seams to match, just keep that in mind. And if you want to go all the way across, there's a little bit that's going to be covered. With the steps and maybe a couple window frames. But for the most part, it's going to be visible so and I'm just adding different sizes of stones 
so you do that to the entire front and the top piece you probably won't see but I'm gonna go ahead and add the texture to it just because it's here and it's small and just remember that if you're doing like oblong stones kind of like I am for this or I'm at least mixing it up but you can tell there's definitely the stones are going horizontally make sure that you do it horizontally the same goes with the side panels your stones if you're doing a pattern make sure that they're going in the right direction which this would be like this is the vertical so you want those to go this away okay so completely do that and we'll be back okay now that all my stone pieces are complete I'm going to use the same technique that I used on the cobblestone to begin with and that is uh, black paint mixed with Mod Podge and if you don't want to do this you don't have to um, you can always just paint it black and then paint it with Mod Podge but if you're going to do a lot of construction then you may just want to mix some up possibly in a smaller container <laughs> we're just going to coat everything that we see and then also the insides of the windows um, and the back sides of the walls and the, one of the reasons I wanted to get this done is because we have lots of different layers of paint to dry so the uh, book nooks don't really take that long but the paint drying I wouldn't recommend taking a heat gun to this because it would melt right but so paint you paint you something up and then have a second project in the wings uh, or we can start painting the the woodwork and gluing some of that together too so we have options and this layer doesn't have to be a complete coat because like I said we got lots of layers to go we're going to get into those cracks later too you don't want to fill up the cracks with your Mod Podge because then you won't be able to see them uh, but you do want to make sure that you have a pretty good coverage I'm painting the insides of the window frames I may do that on a different layer but paint all the insides of the, the window frames and stuff uh, and on this one we don't have to paint the sides because you won't see them but if you're doing it anyways you may as well now this one I went ahead and did the same technique um, I did on the sidewalks with the cobblestone and that was put texture on one side of each of these effectively making it uh, giving it a, 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 a right uh, correct and incorrect side but it's going to be what's facing and if I can pull it off if I can figure out how to have this thing open and still have your lighting in there we're going to do it so so that you can see all your hard work so yep just coat everything with this one time and then when it's completely dry we'll come back and then these we want to do the front back and sides so it's got a couple different layers of drying involved and I always paint my fingers oh well okay so I'm going to finish these up and then take the dog to the groomer so it can dry okay there is the cobblestone or building or whatever black mod podged let's since it's not time for me to leave yet let's try and glue some stuff together for the doors and the windows so 
So these little half circles are to keep the windows round. And then I also included some whole circles if you need them. So that's what those are. These small circles are the sign. These are brackets. This is an extra piece in case I need to cut because I think I'm short some window uh, pieces here. And yeah, so let's start. Um, these two bigger windows or wider windows are the round ones. So let's put those off to the side for a minute and let's focus on the other windows. Okay, so I have one small one for the middle, two small ones for the middle, I think it goes like this, two small ones for either side. Here, I'll show you. So here's these two. The round ones are here. I got a small window for the middle here and here. So those are all the windows except for the door window, which we'll get to. So these are the window frames. And if you're hand cutting this, you do not have to make all these different things. And you can even use like plastic and draw them on there. This is the big window frame, and I think that does not fit that one. It must be that one. Okay, this one doesn't get a frame apparently, which is fine. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take our art glitter glue. Again, Crystal sells this in. 16 ounce containers on in our store the lids don't fit on the 16 ounce containers which um, I would find that hard to use anyways so this is the two ounce so get you a two ounce that has the little fine point thing and then a 16 ounce to fill her up it's been a couple days since I used this so we gotta get her going again Take the window frame, oh, there we go, that's as simple. And I wouldn't be too worried about getting it all over. Window frame on the window, number one. That just gives it some dimension. Again, there's a million different ways you can do this, so. You don't have to do it the way I do it. I can zoom you in a little bit. Okay. If you don't have an art glitter glue, I recommend that you get one, but if you don't want to grab a A paintbrush, put some glue down, or a toothpick, put some glue, a glob of glue down, and glue it together that way. Okay. You may be able to use one of those sticker makers to do it, but I find that the sticker makers leave like globs of adhesive in the corners and I don't want to deal with that. Okay, so all my little windows, with the exception of this one that apparently I didn't cut a frame for, have frames now. And now these little pieces here are supposed to be like a window seal. I don't Maybe I didn't make window seals for these because these do not 
I think those were actually off cuts, but that's okay. So if you want to put window seals on, just grab a scrap and this is the off cut. So it's already cut thin. Uh, I also have extra uh, woodworking scraps that we're going to use on the bigger windows. And that goes here. And you can just And you can build up as many layers as you want on there to give it a 3D effect. So there's one. And you can see it just gives it a little more. We'll do another one. You can almost put some flowers or something on that window seal. It sticks out so far. Give it dimension. Okay, there's one. And then I have that's a little big. That one's okay. This one may only have one. Well, I have this little piece too that I really don't know what it goes to. So maybe we'll use that. I'll put one on a time, one at a time on there before I cut them. some dimension. Alright, I got these two little windows and these little windows I'm not horribly worried about. I think we're just going to leave them the way they are. Zoom you back out a little. So my two mid windows, the little windows. Oh, yep, there we go. Okay, there and there and there. Okay, before we do this last window and the door, not last window, but that window and door, let's do the steps. So, the steps are this flat sheet here, and they have the bend lines, and you just fold that in an accordion see how the steps take place or take shape <laughs> now along the out the out underside I'm sorry along the side you take your glue that shape your steps. And you're going to have to hold it there for until your glue catches. OK, 
Okay, that one's kind of dry. I'm going to let that dry the rest of the way until, before I try and put the other side on because I could tweak it. Uh, we'll mess with it. So these are the tops and bottoms. No, just the middles. You only need three of these. But on the top and bottom of each one, we're going to add one of these small strips for like the woodwork to make it look three-dimensional that one don't fit and the middle one is too long why doesn't why don't these things fit you don't need them okay so I guess Here's one that fits. This one's longer. Because I have two different sizes there. I think I did extras for the windows. The window seals. This one's longer. Okay. Just gives you a little bit of dimension there, and when you paint it in age it or distress it or whatever you want to call it, it uh, it does make a difference. All right, that one. I guess we'll go with these two. This looks longer. Yeah, these two are longer. Okay. I wouldn't be too worried about getting glue all over <laughs> just because we're painting it and it, it's so small so you're not going to notice. Okay, so we got these. And this one we're going to end up cutting so it doesn't, those. They don't all go to the end, but that's okay. The last thing we're going to do is, oh, well, not the last thing, but let's go ahead and do this small window for the door. these two tiny little door details. And you can always paint this stuff on. So don't feel intimidated or, you know, that you need to do, go to this extent is just part of the file that I had so I'm using it that I had created I actually used um, if you guys seen my haunted mansion tutorial I took a lot of the elements from that and scaled them down I designed that a long time ago and there's no sense in 
reinventing the wheel. Okay. So, do I want, let's go ahead and finish the steps now that that side's pretty much set and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I have a gap. It's not exactly flat, but it's fine. It's part of not having flaps or, you know, on either side of the items to tuck in, but it's hard to use flaps on something this small. So this is the side that's visible anyways. Let's try and get that lined up as best as possible. That looks pretty good. It's still a little off, but it'll work. And then I got some extra pieces here. We'll put off to the side because we use these extra pieces or at least have the potential to use the extra pieces. Okay, that's that enough. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this is the sign holder. And they have fancier ones, but I it's too small to cut out a fancy one. Or you can just use a paper clip that you you know fold up or whatever. Okay, so there's all that stuff. And I think I'm gonna do something a little different uh, with these windows. I did not use any plastic in the windows before. I tried and it didn't work because the plastic was too thick, but I think I can use like re really thin plastic packaging, but I have some stuff called string gel medium. And I'm just trying to use my stuff. This is something I got. It was on clearance. The store was closing. And I got a whole bunch of mixed media stuff. And I just don't know when I'm going to use it. So. I want to. I think. Use the back of this. And hopefully, it will be a little better than the transparency that I tried to use the first time. Put these back on here so they don't stick to that paper. So um, I'm pretty sure you could probably do the same effect with just like Mod Podge, uh, gloss Mod Podge, but I probably can't, yeah, you can kind of see the transparency. Put my glue back together here. And so you just take and brush this on. And the effect that it has, I tried it out yesterday, is this. So this was called um, stucco something or other, and it's a very textured pumice. This is the stucco. This is something that was called fibers, which kind of just looks like wet toilet paper to me. This was 
something called Goosebumps, and then this is the gel medium. The fiber. I think they're all gel medium, but... So I'm just going to take and apply this to this clear sheet, and then we'll use this for the windows. I think it'll soften the light. You know what I probably should have done <laughs> is go ahead and paint the windows first and then stick this. That's okay. We'll do two layers. Okay, so. But I encourage you, since Mod Podge dries clear, you can see how that looks. Uh, since Mod Podge dries clear, I encourage you to try that with Mod Podge and see what happens. Okay, while that's drying, let's start some painting. I'm using the fresco finish in opaque black. I have to remember to shake these because they have a lot of pigment in them. Okay and then you can use purple if you want. Um, I'm going to do all black and then we can add accents. And then I need some white for the steps. I'm going to mix some. And it's just going to be an all over coat to start. Okay, so now the steps, and we're just going to take some white and add it to our black to make a gray step. Kind of look like stone. And now we get to have some fun with some color. So we're going to take and paint individual bricks bright colors. So I have the Fresco Finish Zucchini. And you just need a tiny bit because you just have a tiny bit to this is the amethyst. Sherbert. It's one of my favorites. And I don't have a fresco finish yellow, so I have this um, craft paint yellow. And I'll show you the difference between the two is the thickness, if you can see the difference. Uh, the fresco finish paint is way thicker. I'm going to get a small brush. And take off this thing. Each brick, not each brick, but just pick a couple bricks to paint these bright colors. Okay, so now that we got some extreme bright colors going on, what we need to do is go over with our wash, homemade or otherwise. 
Again, I use some um, liquid thinner for airbrushes and Tim Holtz black soot distress paint, but you can use um, thin down acrylic paint or ink. It's just not as good because it doesn't have a thinner in it. Um, or you can use it's a dishwasher finish for the thinner and water and paint. There's a bunch of videos. Just look for uh, like DIY washes. So this time we're going to do a little different. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the way that I have been with a brush. And you can see how that kind of blends that stone in. And then I'm just going to dab. Go over it again and you just like repeat until you have your desired finish. And then we're going to go over again with a weathered look like a dry brush so if it if it's too dark for you right now it's okay well it'll get better or darker okay everybody so I got my Ollivanders all painted and dry and then all my piece parts are painted and just to do like a little fit up I'm going to take my large wall which consequently I used the paint on and I'm going to put it to the outside of my street because we have two layers of foam there and just do a dry fit up and it looks like I got mm, about an inch at the top so so remember if you use the templates that I downloaded on uh, the Google Docs thing and I'll leave a link below you want your building without the bendable tabs to be about eight inches I got seven and seven eighths so okay so we have our building cut out painted, dried, all our components painted and dried, and then this piece of um, packaging that I'm going to add to the windows. Now on my other one, I did not add it to the windows, so if you want to skip this step, you can. I put this string gel medium on it, but I'm looking at it and it looks like you could put like glue on it and use a paintbrush and it would give you the same kind of effect so um, I'm going to glue the windows to this piece of paper Okay, everybody, let's start putting stuff together, and I prefer to put things together while it's flat. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the flat windows in because those are the easiest. So I'm going to take these aside. I'm going to take my art glitter glue and go around the outsides of these small windows. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go around the outside of these small windows. There we go. And they go right there. And they fit pretty 
close. They're just a tiny bit bigger than the hole that we created. And then these will dry while we're messing around with the other windows. You're, it, it, you're not going to get like a really good adhesion. Like you're not going to stick it down and it's going to stick. Like it's only going to stick to the raised parts of the stone. So you just kind of put it on there where you want it and set it aside. It takes a while to dry. Now this one is like popping up, so I am going to hold it there until it gets just a little better adhesion. Okay, and so let's put the door frame on. pieces are window frames for these uh, curved windows. Let's go ahead and stick those on. Give them a little bit of time to dry while we're messing with those other windows. And we could have done this a while back, but the stairs are going to go on after when we put the sides on. Here. Okay, and then this is the part that makes this whole thing kind of finicky. And that is getting these windows to stay curved. So first you have um, of this reinforced band here. And we just need to kind of round it a little bit. Um, if you have round items in your craft room, so that when you try and put it around the circles or the half circles, the half circles, it doesn't crack or like make a sharp bend because that's what will happen. Like you'll start forming it around the half circle and it'll make a very uh, sharp corner because it wants to bend in one place. Like you can see it's starting yeah, right there. You see that sharp bend? We don't want that. So if we can break down the kind of the fibers and the, the paper, because the paper, this is 120 grain paper, and then the places where we put the glue, then we should be able to prevent most of that. Okay. So once we got it kind of around a roundabout way here, these circles are meant to fit right in side. But when you put these on, they're they're gonna go like outside to outside. So these are kind of gonna be 
Use the circle to guide you how far you have to bend. And I recommend when you put these in to put in this middle one first that has this reinforced band on it. And just be patient and take your time. Okay, and now um, I think we'll go maybe, let's go a little stronger adhesive or at least tackier adhesive and do some Fabri-Tac here on these half circles. The thing with Fabri-Tac is it takes a little bit longer to dry, but because I'm gluing it to that plastic, I think this may be the better choice. So you just put it on the edge and then you stick your half circle right there, right in the middle, and then you have to hold it. So this is pure patience. It's going to take a minute. Okay, so um, the middle here is glued down and like stable, but the sides are still obviously trying to come apart. And I'm super impatient, so we have a couple different options. I think I'm going to try this washi tape option to get it to stay where it's supposed to be. This is a, a washi tape that's not very sticky, but um, if, it, if you have the washi tape and it seems like it's going to pull off your paint, then what you can do is get a some powder. <laughs> get some powder. I have a powder tool that I don't know where it is because I haven't used it forever. Um, but yeah, just get some baby powder or something and put it on there, but I'm not worried about it. So what I'm going to do is since obviously some of this glue has dried, but not all of it, I'm going to go ahead and douse these sides with glue again. You're not going to see the inside of it, so as long as it doesn't come up over the windows, and even if it does come up over the windows, you're probably not going to see it. And then I'm going to just put it right down on top of the window and wrap it around. I wouldn't do this until at least part of it has set. And you want to make sure that the uh, sides of the windows are touching. I did a really bad job at what I just did. So you can do it if your tape will stay just connected like that. You can do it or you can take a clip and put sticky side to sticky side. clip it if it won't stay by itself like that um, like one of these clips or one of the just binder clip things and then I would let that dry before I tried to get the other two we need at least one here and one here probably three one two three
Okay. I feel like that's doing a fairly good job, so I'm going to try and put a second one in there, again using the washi tape to hold it. And let's do, let's do this one down here, because these are much easier because that big um, Okay, these have been sitting here forever, so let's see what happened. Uh, zoom in a little bit. And, okay, so that didn't stick any more than it had before. And these aren't dry yet, but... Starting to see a little bit of progress here. Okay, so if I if you missed how I did the bottom two here, <laughs> I put first you glue just the bottom in the curve and you stick your half circle in there and you let it dry. Just let that dry and then you can do the sides. And then we'll tape it up the rest of the way. Just like that. Whoops. All you gotta do is just let it sit long enough to get this to sit in here. Let it dry just
Okay guys, I ain't gonna lie. I've been doing this all day. So we're gonna go basically with however these came out. Um, I have some suggestions. So first off, I didn't think the plastic uh, that I used was going to be that big of a deal. Uh, because it was so thin, but what it did was wrinkled under or when I folded it around it wrinkled under the pieces so it made it so the it actually stuck out a bit so this is actually very similar they're not all the way straight you can see they're kind of bulgy here that's perfectly fine that's kind of how they were in my other one Remember, you're looking from the to, at this at an angle, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, nor should you expect it to be perfect. Uh, happy to say that this is one of the hardest things that we do. Uh, the other thing that you may consider is not putting these on until after you get the shape because I think that made it a lot harder than it was last time. It wasn't easy last time, but it didn't take this long. But it's done. I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go with the flow. I think I have one that I, I can't. I can't use this one off that far, but we'll fix it when we put it on here. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is put the door on. And the door actually goes behind the um, opening here. I guess this is the door and the window. So. If you put your adhesive right along the outside here, we should be able to stick the door on. Oof. There we go. Maybe. Okay. We're going to stick stick the window on. If we have a little bit of room between the two, we're just going to add a little black strip because that's why I painted extra black strips okay so you kind of end up like that there is a spot between the door and the window and uh, this is just like a scrap We will get done with all the vanders today. I you know I've been working on it all day. This is the hardest of everything. Okay. No, I just don't want that to stick to anything. So I'll prop it up on one of these clips. Okay. Now, the rest of this is very simple and very, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like non, uh, it's, <laughs> there's no technical, it's no, there's nothing technical to it. You literally just put these on. That's it. Uh, you just glue them on. So uh, right above the door, this is the extra piece that we made that has the two smaller pieces. And it's going to be where we paint, I think it says something like Makers of, wine, of Fine Wands, 
makers of something one since 18 something. We're gonna attempt to paint something like that, but it's not gonna come out like that. So you kind of cut it to length and glue it right above the door. And then you're gonna use that to place your long windows. And you just run a bead of glue up the side of the windows Run a bead of glue on the backs of these half circles, even though they probably won't touch. If they do, it'll give you a little extra support. Um, not the bottom. Well, I mean, not the bottom of the... Don't put any glue here, because it's not... Probably not going to touch. If it did touch, it was going to be... Now you got a lot of extra glue there and that's okay. It's going to seep out. It don't matter. You know why? Because you ain't going to see it. And even if you see it, especially on Ollivander's here, it's going to like just create interest. Okay. So. It's probably not going to hit on all sides. Just so you know that. Get it to hit predominantly on one side or wherever you can so that it sticks and then we'll fill in the rest with glue and you can fill it in from the back if you don't want to fill it in from the front um, I really have no preference so I'm just going to there we go and then this side probably yeah this side with the exception of the top isn't even touching I'm going to let that dry complete and then see if I want to Let's see if I can zoom in. This side's not touching. There's a fairly, um, probably about an eighth inch gap in there. If I push this side down, it's just going to make this side come up. So we're going to let this side dry complete. If I choose to try and stick that side down, we can. But honestly, it's not that important. Zoom it back up. You will not be able to see it. If anything, you'll see it through the mirror because that's going to be on the opposite side anyways. And it'll be an illusion. You won't be able to tell what it is. Okay. There's this side. Make sure you get it lined up with your okay and again it's going to give me um, this side which is good because that's the side that's facing the the outside and the art glitter glue and um, most PVA glues dry clear And then later we can um, hit it with the top and the bottom. Um, this one didn't really glue that great. I'm going to go ahead and use it. Like I said before, I don't think it's really going to matter that much. It's going to stick out a little bit, but you won't see it. I'm going to put it on the far side. The side that is away from the opening. And you just kind of line this one up with the lower one. Later on, if I choose, like maybe use some super glue or something on that. I not I don't have good luck with super glue. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I need to whip out the super glue. Maybe I'll try after I let this dry a little bit. Okay, so. There's the hard part. You just, you know, let that dry. And then you take the steps, the little steps here. And you do the same thing with them. Don't do the bottom because you're, you're not sticking it to anything yet. You just do and 
line it up with the the bottom line it up with the bottom of the uh, building not with the bottom of the door because it doesn't go flush against the door see I guess we could have moved the door up a little bit there would have been such a big gap note to self don't turn things upside down when they're still drying now there's going to be dog hair stuck to it. Okay. Let's just put that back. Oh, there's another piece of dog hair. Okay. Okay. I better put some more glue on this. Don't turn it upside down while it's still wet. You set this aside and let it dry. And then we can glue the walls on here. So I'm going to set this aside. And let's look. I have extra pieces. Oh, we got to do the sign. We got to do the sign. So we glued these two things together. And we still have to paint the sign. Maybe I should wait. Um, you can use, I, I used the, I used a jump ring before. I'll go for it again. So I'll use this jump ring. I'm going to glue these two together. I have two chances to get the sign right because they're uh, some more extra pieces. And these circles, if you run out of um, half circles, you can just cut those in half. Or if you want to try and make it go all the way around, I'm going to use one to glue my jump ring to that little holder thing. That way if it sticks, it sticks to that. And I guess it doesn't really matter what, the, what it sticks to. You can't see it if it's on that black thing. You can use whatever kind of glue you want to do this. Whoops. It's just a jump ring. The jewelry stuff, you can use thread, which is what I use later. You can use like ball chain, ball chain thing stuff. Okay. And later on we're going to paint the Ollivander sign on there. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. And we have to paint Ollivanders on the sign. Okay, so while we're waiting for this, we need something to put this on. So, we're going to take our floor... And I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and run a piece of wire under here. If you're using fairy lights, you don't have to do that, obviously. So, I have... have this, I think it's 20 gauge wire, I bought from McMaster Car, it was like $4. So if you venture on a wiring spree, then this is what you use. The cool thing about using styrofoam, don't cut too deep. you just cut out where your wires are gonna go and then you don't have to worry about bulk
So you can always run the wire under there for your fairy lights. And where, you know, wherever. Visualize what you got going on here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue now since I ran my wire. Glue my floor on. Use the fabric tack for that. Again, it's good for a lot of different things. It definitely has an odor to it. Okay, so you know all those mini albums that you make? <laughs> well, maybe you don't, but I make. I end up with a ton of small strips. What I do with my small strips is cut them into one inch and score them at a half inch. So essentially what you end up with is um, an angle piece of cardstock at a half inch. And this is like 60 pound cardstock. Nothing, uh, nothing big. And this is how we put our box together. I put all my structures together like this and it works wonderfully and it doesn't cost a whole lot. So we're going to go to the outside. We'll actually stick to the outside of this surface uh, surface of your chipboard. This is not quite long enough. I should have probably got a longer one. And then on the other side, glue there. This goes right and butts up against here. Okay, so this is your front. This is your, sorry, this is your front. This is your back. And we have to cut a hole in the front wall, so we'll let that dry. Get out our brick template. Okay, I'm gonna ruin my X-Acto knife blade by finishing this off with my X-Acto knife. So it's pretty much done. I just need to get the corners. It doesn't have to be exact either because you're gonna cover it. We can save this for something. I always save things. We can go ahead and put this on. There's no reason not to. Cool. So all except for the painting is done. He, um, uh, I may go back and fix him a little bit with some hot glue or not hot glue, but um, get the words out. He may need some super glue. I don't like I said. I don't really use super glue, so I don't know. Okay. Now, whip out your fresco finished paints. And grab your Here, I just have a white. I don't have the fresco finish white, but so this isn't as thick. This is just regular white craft paint that I got from Whatever. Get a little bit of white paint on your brush and then wipe it off. Makes sense, right? This is what we call dry brushing. So what it does, I shouldn't do that, is it brings out all the texture 
that you have on here. And it ages it. So you can do it to the bricks. Whoop, not that much. <laughs> you can do it to the windows. You may want to be careful not to do it too much to the uh, glass in the windows, but definitely the woodwork, the door, the windows, whatever these metal bar things are at the bottom. wipe off almost all the paint. Do a little on the steps, you can just dab. Do some on the building. Okay, so yeah, I think that looks neat. Maybe do a little bit on the sides wherever I put those. Just the one side, this side, you won't see the other side. It's actually sitting up against the other building, so, okay. So, don't forget that step. I think that step adds a lot of, like, character to it. I think I could even do a little bit more. And it's easier to do it before you add the lettering. Okay, good enough. Okay, now let's get our little brush out and the gold paint, gold fresco finish paint. And, crap, what did I do with the sign? Okay. So the sign, there's different signs, but the one I'm going to do is the O with the wand. It looks like this. You... It looks like that right there, right there. That's what we're going to do. This is going to be the side that you see. So, you nervously, but loosely. like way too much paint look way too much paint but that's okay Okay, good enough. Let that dry. And then on here, we're going to write Ollivanders. So like, let's do 
There's two lines. And it looks just like this. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay, so wash that off. Okay, so I glued my little sign on. Um, I, I think I may have missed the footage, but I just used some squat, sketch quick dry adhesive and just glued it on straight sideways it's right there um had to snip a little bit off because it fits between these two windows but it was a little too long so uh yeah here's all of Anders. i hope you guys have a great night the rest of it won't be so hard i promise uh this is the only one that we use the foam board for the rest of it we're just going to use the template material head on over to asc supplies on etsy to get all your cool stuff that you need to create this project and all the other projects that i do on my channel uh, almost all of them. Uh, and comment, like, and subscribe so that you can see more cool stuff. We'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.